Hello everybody and welcome to my podcast Just Selfie Knits. This is my yeah, my part of the internet when I talk about uh, knitting and other knitting related stuff. Um, if you're a new viewer, viewer, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm really happy to have you here. Um, I hope you like it. So please give me a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. This is completely free. Um, so you can just go ahead and have a look uh, at me more often. Um, so for, before I start, I just want to give you a little a life update. So some of you might have seen my previous episode which I talk about the Evie sweater and there you can see that I have a little crack in my finger and that I have a splint. Well, now the splint has been removed and I have like um, some kind of tape to tape my finger to another one. It's removable so I can take a shower or bath without having to take care of plastics over this. I can wash this. Um, so it's quite clean as well and I'm happy. Uh, I just have to take care of my finger and rest, but I can knit, so that's good. I cannot knit everything, uh, so some of my previous loops are actually in hibernation because, uh, yeah, doing cables uh, like lace on socks or um, color work isn't really good for the moment because I really need my second hand for that. Luckily, I'm an English knitter, so I am right-handed and it's not a real problem. So I have been knitting and I have been able to finish things. First of all, what am I wearing? I'm wearing a sweater knitted by my mom. Uh, she knitted this a few years, years ago. It's uh, a Pilou uh, yarn from Veritas. It's acrylic yarn, but it's acrylic yarn I like to wear actually. Uh, it doesn't feel per se really plasticky. I have seen worse in the past. Um, it's a design she just made up while knitting. Uh, the only thing is the sleeves have grown, although I have been trying this laying flat, so I yeah just flip them over. So this is from my mom and not one of my own knits. I just returned from work and I didn't want to change into something else and I'm wearing a knit. Um, it's quite cold today, so that's why I'm not wearing my latest finished object, of which, uh, you, oh, which you, I will show you now. So my latest finished object, well not my latest, but my latest big finished object is this Fargo block from the Knit Pearl Girl. I was one of the testers and uh, last time I only had to do like this amount of the body, hemming and the eye cord. When I fell I only had to do one third of the bottom hem and the eye cord. So that was quite fine to finish with one hem. Uh, what I like about the design uh, is the fact that it has big sleeves, really big sleeves. And I really love this, like the sewn hem is really lovely. I think it takes ages, but it's so lovely to do. Uh, it's quite mindless after a while, so it's okay. Um, I was able to do this perfectly with one hand, by the way. I love it. What I do love as well is the eye cord and like the little uh, eye cord at the back with yeah so it's really something I like um I do like the design so uh, I will definitely make more but I might try another yarn I've heard of other people using the tin lina from Sandness Garn so I might uh, try that one I haven't purchased it yet because I want I'd only want to buy it when I will use it directly about the yarn this is the pure silk from knitting for Olive um, it took a while before getting used to the yarn because it tangles with itself, but at the same time, um, yeah, after a while when you get used to it, it's fine. Uh, the only issue I have with the yarn is, this, is the fact that it bleeds a lot while blocking. I didn't expect it, so I forgot to do the acid uh, in, the, in the water, but it's really... It, my, my water was just blue. This is the dove blue, by the way. Um, so it was really bad. Um, my initial plan was to wear this with my high-waisted white trousers, but I don't dare to do that because I'm afraid it won't be white trousers anymore afterwards. So um, luckily I do have a jean skirt that has a high waist as well, because otherwise it would have been too short to wear with my other jeans because they are not that high in my waist. 
so I would have made it longer if I knew about the bleeding before. So I want to warn you about the bleeding. Um, so I will make this one again longer than uh, this time because uh, yeah, I want to be able to combine it with um, yeah with my other plants as well. Uh, the silk feels when I wear it; it feels really nice, but it feels cold as well. Which is ideal for a summer day at work because I yeah sometimes you have those days at work where it's really 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 hot and you still have to wear something decent. Well, I believe this will be my go-to top then. So uh, I hope that the summer brings some of those days and that I can wear it. So I'm really looking forward to that. I am planning to give an overview of all the summer yarns I have been using and wearing this summer at the end of the summer um, because this year is actually the year I want to start making summer knits as well so that's why I want to give an overview as well as the yarns. Next uh, finished object is this pair of socks. It's a pattern from the online break campus from Miriam Molenbeek. It's magic loop socks, just plain vanilla socks. I have been making them on 2.5 millimeter needles. It's 56 stitches. Um, I actually like magic loop. I didn't expect it because I hate magic loop for sleeves, but I like magic loop for socks apparently. I have strange mind. Um, but I don't really like the yarn. I'm really happy with the color. I. It's just such a happy color, the new orange, yellow and pinks, I really, really love it. This is Lang Yarn Socks in the Colorway color Berlin. I like the fact, the fact that you can travel through your socks, by the way. But um, remember last time I was asking if the fact that I wasn't really happy with how the socks of my husband were yeah, holding up after washing and wearing, and if it would have been the husband or the yarn, well, I'm quite sure it will be the yarn because it's the same brand. Um, although the pulling is quite fine at this time because I only have worn them once. It's like, it's, the pulling is not the biggest issue. It's like they stretch so much after one day of wear that you can only do one thing and that is wash them. I did uh, discover that if I wash them on the wool program, doesn't help if I wash them on my regular program, it's fine. So that's what I do now for my husband's socks, but I'm not really happy with that because it means that, um, yeah, they're not really good and, and comfortable after a day of wearing. And I have more or less the same with these in not the same amount uh, as my husband. Um, not yet because I have only been wearing them once. But it is there. So uh, what will I do? I will first of all try all different types of brands of yarn and types of yarn. We will see later more about that. Um, but this one is actually the, the brand that is like the most easy to get. So I do have some of some other uh, uh, yeah skeins of that yarn, and I will try to use them. So the first thing I will try is uh, go down a needle size to two point two five. So maybe a denser fabric will, um, will avoid it. So if you have any thoughts about it, please let me know. Because um, it's not really fun to work on a pair of socks and then have this as a result. And it's not really me. Uh, because I'm really, like my January socks, they were from Tokyo, from Katya. And I just love them. I, whenever I have the chance to wear them, I wear them. Um, so, yeah. I think it's not particularly me, it's more about the brand of yarn. So, but I will switch to other brands as well. And then my last finished object is actually something I have made completely while, while my hand was uh, in a splint or in this uh, tape. It's my very, very first brioche pattern, and it's uh, the Ingeborg uh, headband from uh, Petit Knits. I think it's ideal to have a headband as a first brioche pattern because you don't have to increase, decrease or do anything special. And if it would have been bad, I'd just be ripping it back and starting all over. So I think this is the ideal starting pattern for a uh, brioche uh, type of thing. So if you know about a pattern that would be good as a second one, please let me know. 
um i would love to use it to move more often but i don't feel comfortable in having like a really special pattern yet so if you have a good second pattern please let me know this uh is actually made in rico yarn it's uh essentials meha wool chunky in the colorway six i do have two and a half of these balls left so I will be able to make matching middens next year as well, yeah, next winter as well. So I'm looking forward to that because it matches a scarf that I have been making at the beginning of the winter. So then by next winter, I would have a complete set. So that's really nice to have. So that's actually all of my finished objects. Now I'm going to tell you more about my whips. The first thing is a sock for a testnet. It's the Spring Bloom Socks from Navy Knits. Uh, Isa is her name, I guess. Uh, I don't know if you say Isa or Isa, sorry. Um, it's a pattern uh, that I'm testing for her and I really love it. So there is a lace detail on the top and then you have like a uh, sort of uh, yeah, pattern over the fridge and uh, I really like it. These are short socks, uh, ideal for the springtime, but I'm unable to finish the second sock now because of the lace. So I was already at the heel when I, or after the heel when I uh, broke my hand, but now I'm unable to do it. It's really too, uh, yeah, too fiddly to have it done, but these one will just wait. It was fine to have just one sock because then you already know the fit and if the pattern is clear so i can just finish the second one while i'm uh yeah after i my hand has healed i will put this one right where i can see it so that i don't forget to finish this one after i get better so this will be uh something that you don't see next time i suppose but the time after that and then a whip actually the only whip that you will see that you have been seeing before is this Biela from the Knit Pro Girl, just to keep myself accountable and will be continue showing this, although I only have done four centimeters of one sleeve, which is not a lot, but it's better than nothing. I will try to work on this while editing this uh, video as well, so I might have some extra by next time. So, and then I have a new cast on, which is, oops, in a uh, host yarn, host, host coast yarn, which is cotton and merino, uh, I really love it. It's a, it's a summer yarn, I guess. <laughs> um, it's a summer color as well. Um, like, yeah, it's just exactly what I want. Um, I'm just, I'm a pink girl. I'm sorry, <laughs> pink and blues. Um. This is the no frill sweater. I'm making this slightly smaller than the pattern just suggests because you know, you know, a petite knit gives you a lot of overs, uh, a lot of positive ease, and I don't like that exactly. So I just size down a bit until I have what I want, and I'm positive that it will be fine. Um, this is one week of knitting, so it's since I have this type of bandage at my ha hand that I'm uh, knitting this, um, so it's quite fine already of what I have. Uh, so I'm positive that I will be able to split for sleeves by the end of next weekend um, and that I will be able to uh, finish this in a few weeks because, well, this is the easiest thing to make for me for the moment. It doesn't have cables, color work or anything special. It's just this. And um, it's on my higher higher needle, so it's really easy to knit. The whole yarn is really easy to knit as well, so I'm really happy with that. So that's already uh, one uh, new cast on and I'm planning to cast on a few extra things. If we stay in the host uh, thing team, this is two strands of the light gray and one of a darker in the host and I'm planning to make a sweater for my husband in this. This is just, this is not my gauge swatch. This is just a, I want to see how the yarn behaves swatch. Um, it gives more variegated than just a plain uh, color, I guess. And he likes it, uh, so I will make a sweater out of that for him. So once I got a little bit further with my no frill sweater, I will be casting on this one. And the husband will also receive more socks, so he will receive his April socks, which I talk, have talked about uh, have talked about in a previous episode. 
but you will also have some other socks which are the mondine the mondine yarn mondine is a um yarn that is non-superwash non-nylon for socks so it will be good for the call of i think there is someone who has a call about non-nylon socks i do not remember who is it Manrings or is it something else i will have to look it up uh but anyway it's a non it's a really na it's a natural yarn so i'm really curious to see how this one will behave on my husband's foot uh, and if it will be uh, something that wears out easily or not so looking forward to that i will make the meditation socks which is also a test knit but it doesn't involve lace so it should be fine looking forward actually and then last time i talked about the call that was uh that would have been started by Hire Snakes, and now I have the yarn to participate. I have Drops Bell in a pink yarn and Drops Bell in a petrol color. Uh, Drops Bell is 53% uh, of cotton, 33% of viscose, and 14% of linen. I just want to warn you if you hear any noises, my uh, neighbors are renovating, and I think I just. <laughs> hear them arriving so it might be a little bit more noise than normally anyway the drop spell the drop spell is really cheap yarn so i hope it's fine but it's worth a guess why it's worth a guess because i will make the seashell top which is a really summer top uh so it's, it's not something i will be able to wear to work um it will be something for real summer days and as you know we don't have a lot of those in belgium and if you go on a holiday, then you wait one day and then it has to be washed, but you cannot wash on a holiday. So it's something that will not get a lot of wear, but something I want to have in my wardrobe. Um, I'm planning to start this soon. It's lace, but uh, it's on bigger needles than the sock lace. So I'm going to try not this weekend, but the weekend after if I can cast on and if I'm able to do this. By then my hand should be a little bit better still in this uh, bandage but it should be a little bit better uh, than now I will start with a petrol one because my no frills is already a pink one so that is actually what I have about my plans my wigs and my finished objects what I forgot last time and what I want to make up this time is uh, giving a shout out to other podcasters and the first one is Caroline's Knits everybody knows caroline's knits no and so uh, i really like it because her podcast because uh because she makes a lot of sweaters and i love that as well and i get really inspired by her and the colors she wear she wears um she has a really beautiful fur sweater from maybe for all of so i'm really big fan of that next to that i also have a less known maybe also still no still a good known but less known and it's Vanessa B. It's a girl that studies in Berlin and now uh, now studies in Berlin and originates from Luxembourg, which is quite close to Belgium, so uh, that's relatable, I guess. Um, next to that, Vanessa also uh, takes care of getting affordable yarn, and that is something I want to do as well. Like my whole coast is really affordable, especially on the cones. Um, the drops is affordable. Um, the knitting for all of us might be slightly more expensive, but for pure silk, it's still affordable. So I am a person that wants to keep my hobby um, affordable without compromising too much on the quality. Like, um, I know that you will compromise a bit, but it still has to be something that you can wear for a long time without ha it having uh, like damage or whatever after one wear or something so that's something i want to take care of as well next to uh the affordable thing uh there has a lot of uh, there has been a lot of discussion about sustainability and slow fashion lately i wasn't really surprised at the collaboration uh of we are knitters and zara man because um i'm not a real we are knitters person i don't i don't know if didn't feel really slow fashion to me but that can be a personal thing um i would have been more shocked by other brands i must say but i must say that i'm now thinking about how i behave and 
sometimes I do buy more than I can uh, knit in a short amount of time, especially because um, the mo most of the time I think I can do more. I always have the plans to do it directly, but it doesn't work that way. Um, and next to that, um, like if I have to buy something and then you have to pay a lot of shipping, I sometimes want to combine it with uh, another yarn to avoid shipping costs or like split the shipping cost over more yarn. So that's something I have to be aware of. Uh, and I just want to go more to uh, close by shops, therefore, so um, to avoid that. So that's one of my goals this year. Uh, to uh, take care of my uh, buying uh, stuff. On the other hand, I do use yarns that are not 100% uh, sustainable because not everything I use is 100% wool or natural. And that's also because, like for example, for socks, I was always told that you need the nylon to make them sturdy. I am really curious about the mandine, so I will let you know afterwards. Uh, but that's actually something... I learned and I do think that if you have something that's super wash and that can be uh, used for a longer time of period I don't necessarily think it's not sustainable because it gets more wear so that's something I do however have a guppy bag and a guppy bag is a bag that promises and I have seen the results I think it's it's, it's true it promises to keep all the small plastics into the bag while you wash it so you don't get your microplastics into the uh, water and into the environment afterwards. So that's something I do use for my knits that contain uh, synthetic fibers as well. So I hope that's already a good start. And I think if we all do a little bit uh, to improve our uh, footprint, we might end up somewhere, uh, yeah, somewhere better. So uh, that's actually everything I had to say about the topic because I haven't been able to read a lot about it so I cannot say about the Ukotex or whatever other uh, things there are uh, out there um, and I don't want to form myself an opinion without having the right knowledge. I'm sure other people will do so please check them out but I'm not able to do that at the moment. What I do want to ask you is uh, do you have any recommendations for buttons, uh, cardigans? Because I really need more cardigans in my uh, wardrobe. Like, uh, I do have some cardigans that were knitted by my mom, but they don't have buttons and like they, yeah, they just hang there. Sometimes it's good, but sometimes I do want something that I can switch to a closed and an open state. Uh, but I'm unable to find exactly what I want. Um, I do think I may want to have something like a needle size 5, maybe 7, like mm, a quick knit to start, a quick curtain knit to start with, I think. Um, that would be a good thing. Uh, yeah, just something easy. Uh, because I'm not a real cardigan person yet, I think. <laughs> so uh, please let me know if you have any suggestions. I'm planning to film again in two or three weeks, so I hope to show you more of my no frills and uh, maybe some socks because I always have socks. Um, yeah, so see you there. Please give me a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel and see you next time.